If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. For the past month, Pastor Mark has been talking a lot about the importance of vision. The quote he has used many times over the past few weeks comes from Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. He's also met with many of you in small visioning groups and collected your worship notes from various Sundays to, to gather your thoughts on where and how Green Valley United Methodist is now being called to minister in the name of Jesus Christ. He knows, as do I, that having a clear vision of where we are headed is vital if we're to get where we're going. Otherwise, any road will get us somewhere and we might find ourselves wandering in the wilderness as the Hebrew people did for 40 years. Christ's message of love and compassion is too important to let it wander aimlessly. Our vision for, of the future, both for ourselves and for this body of Christ, must become clearer if we are to move forward to the place where Christ is leading. I'm certain most, of, most, if not all of you, are aware that there is another set of visions being played out right now, the road to Rio. And I'm not talking about the 1947 movie with Bob Hope and Bing Crosby and Dorothy L'Amour. This road to Rio describes the Olympian journey taken by over 11,000 athletes who have worked long and hard to develop their skills and strengths to compete at the highest level in their chosen passion. Many journey there to feel the weight of the gold medal hanging from their neck as their national anthem is played. Others go there knowing that that weight is not theirs to hold, but they go to challenge themselves to be the best that they could be and to enjoy the competition and the camaraderie and the sportsmanship that is the very essence of the Olympic dream. But why are we talking about the Olympics in church? Well, after all, sports are mentioned in the Bible. For example, wrestling, Jacob wrestling with the angel, marksmanship, David and Goliath, weightlifting, Samson, Swimming and maybe diving, Jonah. <laughs> and sailing, the disciples on the sea. I couldn't find any mention of table tennis or basketball, but I did go through a lot of mental gymnastics preparing this message. All of the athletes come with stories of challenge and dedication that has taken them to the pinnacle of their ability, even when that pinnacle isn't worthy of a gold medal. I'm thinking of the Jamaican bobsled team or Eddie the Eagle, the would-be ski jumper in past Winter Olympics. One of the great stories coming out of this Olympics is the refugee team. IOC President Thomas Bach stated, quote, by welcoming the team of refugee Olympic athletes to the Olympic Games Rio in 2016, we want to send a message of hope for all refugees in our world. Of course, the story of, of one of these athletes stands out, at least to me, and that's a, the one Syrian swimmer, Yusra Mardini. She overcame more than just losing her country. When, six, when the six-person raft carrying 20 refugees from Turkey toward Greece lost power, she and her sister jumped out of the raft and swam for three hours in icy water, pulling the other refugees to safety in Greece. She trained in Germany, and while she didn't qualify for the finals in the 100-meter butterfly, she did win her heat. And then there's the sensational Olympian gymnast, Simone Biles who overcame becoming a foster child at the age of three when she and her siblings were taken from their mother who had severe substance abuse problems. Adopted by her grandparents, 
She was introduced to gymnastics by chance at the age of six. She went on a daycare field trip to a gym and came home with a note that said she was very talented and suggesting that her parents enroll her with a coach in lessons. And the lessons really took. And now Simone is the premier female gymnast in the world. Already has two gold medals and probably very heavy favorite for three more. I could go on and on relating the many challenges and obstacles these athletes face, but as you probably already know some of, some of these already, and what does this have to do with worship anyway? So I go back to our original image, wandering and wondering in the, at a crossroads. If you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. One of the scripture readings this morning was from Hebrews, speaking of a great cloud of witnesses. As I read that passage again and again and watching many of the Olympic performances in arenas packed with witnesses of the courage, dedication, and incredible skills of the athletes, I began to wonder about the cloud of witnesses surrounding us every day of our lives. What are they witnessing? When this cloud of witnesses watch and hear us move through our daily routines and adventures, do they see Christ's love and compassion? When we run our errands, do those around us wonder about how our actions speak to a dedicated effort to perfect the image of Christ? Does the Olympic challenge of dedicated sacrifice to reach seemingly unreachable goals challenge us to go beyond our notions of what is possible and into the next level of spirituality. Every day in the Olympics, athletes surpass their best performances and their times and scores push the boundaries that define the fastest or highest or strongest possibilities we've imagined in the past. As they set new standards of what is possible, others are encouraged to push their own boundaries of possibilities even farther, stretching beyond what they once knew to be possible. These young men and women serve as examples of what can be possible when one works toward a goal, when one has a clear vision of what's to be done, what can be done, and when one chooses to be dedicated to a purpose that pushes them to be more than they thought possible. How are we doing with that challenge? What is possible when we work together toward a vision of tomorrow? I say work together because none of these athletes reached their Olympic dream alone. Behind the scenes were teams of people supporting and strength, the, the strengthening exercises and tending to the more mundane details. <clears throat> Excuse me that enabled the athletes to reach higher levels. Coaches, trainers, sponsors, pep squads, family members who sacrifice to make dreams come true. Without these team members, there would be no progress. There would be far fewer world records and stellar performances. They didn't get their medals. They don't get any medals, but their sacrifice and dedication make a difference. Pierre de Coubertin, the, me, the man considered to be the father of modern Olympics, believed that, quote, the most important thing in the Olympic Games is not winning, but taking part. The essential thing in life is not conquering, but fighting well. That is, the most important part of these games is reaching for something deeper, to become the best that you can be. For Coubertin, the Olympic ideal, quote, seeks to create a way of life based on the joy found in effort, the educational value of a good example, and respect for universal fundamental ethical principles. And so it is with our faith. As individual Christians, we are encouraged to work to strengthen our connection with Christ by exercising the proven spiritual disciplines like prayer and meditation and worship and thanksgiving, and coming together to encourage each other to grow and to stretch. 
We may not be competing for a gold medal, but as Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, do you not know that in a race all runners compete? but only one receives the prize. Actually, Paul was talking about a, some sort of Olympic-style competition where the victors wore laurel leaf garlands instead of gold medals. But Paul wrote that while their garland will perish, the one that comes from God will not. Was Paul com competing in the Olympic Games? No. He was competing in an even greater game, the game of life. And how he played the game reflected the instruction and guidance of his coach, Jesus Christ. Just like the Olympics, the race we are all part of requires training and commitment. Paul was encouraging the people of Corinth and those of us in this room today to take seriously our responsibility of spreading the good news of God's love and grace into a world that's in great need of that gift. I mentioned the cloud of witnesses a little while ago, wondering how the people who, see our, who witness our actions every day see the light of Christ in what we do. I must admit that my example is pretty feeble sometimes. I get caught up in things that don't matter and ignore the things that do. I sometimes get stuck in patterns from my past that worked then, but don't seem to be very helpful today. I need help. And this congregation is one of the places I turn to for that help. Many of you are a part of my cloud of witnesses through some of the outstanding ministries that are part of our service to Christ. Many of you witness silently without needing or wanting a laurel wreath or a gold medal. We take care of each other and we reach beyond ourselves to care for people that we will never see when they're overwhelmed by life's circumstances. You know, there's some powerful things this church can do to expand the heritage of the cloud of witnesses that came before us at Green Valley. Just try to imagine how much we can do to extend the love of Christ if we're all pointing in the same direction, dedicated to a common vision. When we work together with Christ the hungry will be fed. The thirsty will have something to drink. Strangers will feel welcome. Those that are hurting will be given the healing balm of God. And the naked will be clothed. We aren't called to do it all, but we're called to do something. And together, we cannot be denied. Each one of you is an important part of that work. For example, there's one ministry that many of you may not know about and those who do know may not know it has a name. It's one of the ways we take care of each other in difficult times, providing food for those who are experiencing some of the difficult challenges of life. Of course, most of you know about the monthly food drive we participate in to help the local food bank provide food for those in need, but how many of you know about We Care? We Care is a first response ministry that provides meals for a week or two for people who may be recovering from surgery or coping with the loss of a loved one or one of a myriad of other things that invade our lives from time to time that sets us back on our heels. When these things happen, so much is thrust into our consciousness that the mundane task of ensuring that we maintain our strength by eating a nutritious meal is the farthest from our mind. But it is at these times that we need all the strength that we, can get, that we can muster. Currently, we have a few caring minister uh, members who are part of this ministry, but there's a need for more. It's one way to extend the caring ministry that Jesus calls us, calls his followers to, and it doesn't take a lot of time or effort if there are more people willing to serve. If you're interested, please see me after the worship service and I'll give you the contact information. By the way, it's technically a committee, but to my knowledge, there have only been three committee meetings in the last 10 years. So if committees aren't your thing, this is the one for you. It's just one, of the, one way to join the ministry of Christ here and it fits right into whatever the emerging vision of this church is. And as I mentioned 
before the service, there's a ministry fair that's going to happen in two weeks during the worship, worship time, so check it out between services where you can find many of the other ministries and get information on other ways to grow and serve. This morning, I intentionally chose a couple of hymns that may not be familiar, even though they've been in the hymnal for 30 years, because the emerging new vision may call us to move out of our comfort zones into the bright light of God's movement in the world today. I believe that God continues to call us to move beyond what we thought possible, challenging us to step out in faith, all the while assuring us that God is always with us as we follow and grow. We're halfway through the 2016 Olympic Games and the examples of hard work and dedication of these athletes continues to amaze me. You know what? The example of a dedicated team of Christians reaching beyond what they thought possible is even more amazing. There's a fantastic history of Christian ministry right here at Green Valley, and the future calls us to extend the love and grace of Christ even further and in new ways. There are people hurting in many ways that need what we have, what we can provide. We're preparing to take an amazing step into the future, and it's breathtaking. You are the seed. What we plant here in this place has a great impact on God's vision for this, for this neighborhood and far beyond. Will you take that step, not knowing what's going to happen, but having faith that God will provide, that God will be there to move us into our future. I have that faith. God bless you all.